All right, chemistry students, today we are going to be doing problems to show the formation of an ionic bond using electron dot structures. And I like to call these problems love story problems. So I'm going to do a few examples from the notes that we did together in class, starting with this one showing the formation of the ionic bond that forms between potassium and chlorine. So to start out these problems, we are going to draw the dot structures for both of the things involved in the ionic bond. And um, there's a few things that go into that. We've done this before, but I'm going to draw first potassium. So I'm going to put a K here. And to do dot structures, you need to know how many valence electrons these things have. So if I look on the periodic table and find potassium, it's in group 1A. So it has one electron, one valence electron. And so I'll show that by putting a dot here. Remember, it doesn't matter if you put it on the top, the right, the bottom, or the left, but you only have to have, or you can only have one. Okay, and then I'm going to draw Cl for chlorine. And I need to put the valence electrons around chlorine. Chlorine is in group 7A, so it has seven valence electrons. And remember, we can, um, how we do that, we'll put a dot on each side, three, four, and only then can we double up, five, six, seven. Okay, so something like that. So now what we want to do now that we have kind of how they were at the beginning, the story is needing to show what happens to these electrons in order for both to become happy. So everyone wants to have eight electrons or a full valence shell. And so atoms will either lose, gain, or share electrons in order to do that. That's what the octet rule says. So we know that um, potassium, since it has one electron, it would really like to get rid of that because that seems pretty easy. And if it gets rid of that, it will reveal um, a new valence shell that is complete. And chlorine, on the other hand, it really wants to gain one electron so that it would be really happy because then it would have a full octet or eight electrons in its valence shell. So you can kind of see this is an easier example that we can easily see what should happen between these two atoms so that they can both become happy. And we're going to use an arrow to show the movement of the electron. So hopefully you can see here that if potassium gives its electron to chlorine, they'll both be happy. And the way we show that is we need to be very specific about where the, where the arrow is coming from and where it's pointing to. So my arrow is going to start over here, and then it's going to be a curved arrow, and I need to point directly to the open spot on the CL. Okay, so notice there's an open spot there. I need to point directly to there. Not in the general area, okay, not off into space, but I need to point to the right spot, and the arrow has to be curved, not a straight arrow, okay? The reason we can't do a straight arrow is because we need a straight arrow here, to show what happens after potassium gives up its electron to chlorine, okay? And it could give uh, any number of electrons, but it makes sense for this one to just give the one and for chlorine to just accept the one. That will make them both happy. So on the other side of the arrow is the after picture. What do they both look like now after that electron has been transferred? So let's think about this. Potassium used to have the electron, but now it's given it away. So now potassium is naked. You know, we know that it has a full valence shell underneath now, um, but since it started with the one on the other side, it's not gonna have it anymore. But it's happy because it has revealed a new valence shell. Um, and now that it's given up an electron, it has a charge, right? So if you remove one electron, what will be the new charge if you just lost an electron? So hopefully, you know that it will be a positive charge, right? And if something has a charge, we need to put brackets around it. Okay, so now we have the naked potassium and it has a charge of one. And we don't write the one, so it's just K plus, but you have to have those brackets. Okay, and now we need to figure out what the chlorine looks like. So we have Cl, it started with seven electrons, but now remember it has received another electron from potassium. So now actually it's going to have eight electrons. So we'll draw all eight electrons around the CL. Now it's full and happy. Um, and what would be its charge if it gained one electron? 
well, it will have a negative one charge, right? So if it has a charge, it also needs to be in brackets. And it has a charge of negative one. We can write the one. Um, and now, since this has a positive charge, this has a negative charge, they are now attracted. Okay, so that's the ionic bond. The ionic bond is the attraction between positive and negative ions. And the charges cancel out, right? We have a plus one, we have a minus one. So we know that that is a correct ionic compound because if we were to write that, it would be KCl, and we know that that is the correct formula for potassium chloride. So we've now created the chloride ion and the potassium ion to go with it. Okay, so that's an example of the love story problem. Let's quickly go through another, a little more complicated example, also in the notes. So this is now the formation of the ionic bond between sodium and oxygen. So I'm going to go a little faster through this one, but we're going to start out drawing the dot structures. So I'll do sodium first. Sodium is over here. It's an alkali metal in group 1A, so it has one valence electron. And oxygen over here in group 6A, so it has six valence electrons. So we'll get one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I've got six electrons there. So again, I want them both to be happy and have their full octet, right? So they need to lose, gain, lose or gain electrons in order to get eight. Well, in order for sodium to be happy, what does it want to do? It wants to get rid of that one. In order for oxygen to be happy, what does it want to do? It wants to gain two. So we can make sodium happy. Remember the arrow needs to start and end very clearly, and it needs to be a curved arrow. So that electron can go there. Now sodium's happy. Is our oxygen happy? Not yet, right? It wanted two electrons, it's only gotten one. So when we're thinking about what to do, we are allowed to add more of either of these in order to keep making everyone happy. So we wouldn't want to add another oxygen because sodium's already happy. So it's, it's done its job, it got rid of its electron, it's done. Oxygen is the one that needs extra help. It needs another electron. So what we can do is we can bring in another sodium, which also has one valence electron, and then it can give away its electron to the other spot. And this sodium is also happy because it wanted to get rid of its one electron too. So these sodiums are both happy. They got rid of their one electron. The oxygen is now happy because it has gained two to go from six to eight. So now everyone's happy. And so we can draw our regular arrow here and show what it looks like in the end after this has happened. So we'll start out with the sodium. Sodium, what did it do? It got rid of one electron. And so now it's naked, naked sodium. We know there's, there's a full valence shell underneath now. Um, but since it has gotten rid of an electron, what would its charge be? It lost one electron. So it'll have a positive one charge. So we put it in brackets because it has a charge. Give it a charge of positive one. And then this is a little bit tricky. We used two sodiums, so we need to show that somewhere. Okay? We don't show it in the charge because the charge is not positive two. It only lost one electron, so it has to have a plus one charge. So we put a big two right here to show that there were two of these, these things. Okay? And then oxygen it used to have six electrons. It gained two, so now it has eight electrons. Okay, so now it has the eight. Um, it also will have a charge, so it gained two electrons. That will give it a charge of negative two. So remember, we write the number first, two minus. We only used one oxygen, right? So we don't put any number here. We only put the two here because there were two sodiums. There's only one oxygen, so we don't need to write a one. Um, and that is it. So we know that we needed two sodiums for every one oxygen, and that makes sense if we consider the formula for sodium oxide is Na2O, right? Because each of these has a positive one charge, we needed two of those to balance the negative two charge in oxygen. So that makes sense that we needed two for our love story problem.
okay? So those are two examples from the notes. This one a little more complicated. You have other examples in your pretest packet that are even a little more tricky, so you can work on those. Um, let me know if you have questions. Good luck.